Hi everybody, my name is Melanie Newman and welcome to our YouTube channel. Today I'm going to bath my Bichon Dash. I haven't bathed him for about three weeks, so through the Christmas New Year period he's been having the best time living his best fish on life he's actually been spending a lot of time in the warehouse with me so he does have a lot of grime on his little paws so I'm not sure if you can see them but they are quite um, gray and dark and they really feel like if I put a comb or a brush through this, it will actually break his coat. So what I'm going to do is show you guys what I do to bath him after he hasn't been bathed for a long time. I actually, when I do bath him for a maintenance bath, I do condition really, really well. So in times like this where I haven't bathed him for quite a few weeks, his coat really holds up because it is really hydrated and nourished and the knots kind of come out as I'm bathing and blow drying him. So I'll take you through my bathing process and he'll come out looking beautiful, nice and white, clean and back to being really cuddly. Okie dokie guys, so the equipment I'm using today is I'm using one of our salon baths, so this is what we bath our dogs in. Um, I have an exfoliating glove, I use these to help disperse the shampoo and I get really sore hands so it really helps when I'm shampooing the dog. I don't use them when I condition but I just work through with the exfoliating glove. I also have a non-slip mat in the bottom of our bath so this helps our dog feel really really secure and safe. I'm using our Relax Collection today. The Relax Collection is lavender, geranium and bergamot and it's our lightest formulation. So it's absolutely perfect for our curly coat. So our bichons, our poodles, our oodles, poodle crosses, anything with a curly coat, it won't pull that coat down but it will really, really hydrate and nourish that coat. So when I turn the water on, I just like the water to be lukewarm. So not overly hot, but not too cold, just lukewarm. And I always begin rinsing the back of our dog first. And I always rinse the dog before I put the product on. and rinse down his little paws, his other little paw. I'm so lucky because Dash is just amazing in the bath. His little tail, you can see all the little bits of grass in his coat. He had the best time last night playing in the grass. Move around buddy. And as I move towards his little face, I'm just going to angle the corner of the water onto his little head and always going downwards. I never go up towards in his nose area. It's always on the side and down. And then down on those ears as well. And just working down his little chest. And just making sure that coat has a good amount of water in it and is rinsed really well. So when we're doing our dog's face, so when we're rinsing our dog's face, what I would like to do is avoid getting water into the ear canal and also up our dog's nose and around our eye area. If you do have a dog that is prone to ear infections, you can pop some cotton wool in your dog's ears and that just helps avoid any ear, any water getting down the dog's ears. Okay, so I've got the Relax Shampoo and pop a little bit on his back and then down the back leg first. So I'm probably going to wash him really well twice 
and his coat really needs it. And as you can see, when I'm washing him, I'm not scrubbing, I'm just gently working the shampoo through his coat. So this helps avoid any coat breaking um, because as soon as a coat breaks, it's more susceptible to staining and we've got a nice white dog, so we want him looking nice and white. So I'm working the shampoo through all his little pores first. So just working that through. And the color of the shampoo is actually, um, it's gray. So he does have a lot of dirt and um, bits of grass and road grime and lots of things in there. Lots of Christmas cheer in his little legs. Up your heart. And then work through his body and then up towards his head. So it's important when we do do their little face that we just do small areas at a time and just work the shampoo through very, very carefully. And avoiding the eye area. So we can do in front of the eye. We just need to make sure we don't get shampoo in their eyes. Okay, so this is his first shampoo all done. So the first shampoo just helps break up any dirt, debris, oil, any little foreign objects that are, that's in his hair. Helps break that up. So we'll rinse his little head first. So this avoids any shampoo getting into his little eyes. So once I've rinsed his eyes, I like to wipe the water away from his eyes straight away. And using the corner of the shower head just to do his little whiskers. Good boy. And then work down his little back area. And this is a really, really quick rinse. So we don't need to rinse off all the shampoo, just most of it, because then we're, then we're going to apply another lot of shampoo. Okie dokie, so now we do the exact same process. So starting at the back of our dog, working down our dog's paws, so four feet, and then our head through with the shampoo a second time. And this is where we really work the shampoo through. And this is where I remove my exfoliating glove because we're now going to apply the conditioner after we rinse. And you can actually see how white his coat is coming up. So just gently rinsing his eye area and then wipe that excess water away. So I really rinse all the shampoo out. I don't want any residue of shampoo left in his coat at all. Okay, so let's move on to our relaxed conditioner. And this is where I really apply a generous amount when his coat has been left for quite a long time. So three weeks is huge for me because I normally bath him every week. Um, every Friday he gets a bath. So down his little legs. Any areas that have been, um, you know, held a lot of dirt, so feet, muzzles, tail, their underline, um, anywhere that has held a lot of dirt for a long time, that's where I apply a little bit more conditioner. So for him it's his, especially his back feet, 
Um, he does dig a lot, so he digs little holes and sits in his little holes with his toys. I don't know any Bichons that don't love dirt. So working through that coat. His front legs. And I like to apply quite a bit of conditioner underneath or in his armpits because they do get quite matted as well. And his little paw. His armpit. And Dash does have quite a lot of hair on his crest area so I do like to keep that nice and hydrated as well so putting quite a bit of conditioner in that area and just pulling that conditioner through the coat and now his little head I find that Bichons get quite knotty in front of their ear, so their cheek area. So just working through that area and behind his little ears as well. Now he hasn't been brushed either in that three weeks. So this is just a complete bath without brushing. And again, I did this because his coat was that dirty. If I put a slicker through his coat, it would have actually broke his hair because it was so dry from the dirt and all the Christmas fun he's had. So while I let that sort of sit for a few minutes, I like to give him a little bit of a rub down. So working down his back legs. Into his front. He loves a shoulder massage. And his front legs. Working down his little paws. His other paw. head I think that's his favorite part of the bath and then finish off with his little ears good boy buddy and then his final rinse And when we're removing the conditioner, it is super important that we do not leave any conditioner in his coat. This is, a, this is actually a rinse off conditioner, so it's designed to hydrate the coat and moisturize the skin and then to be rinsed off because after we towel drying, before we dry him with the high velocity dryer, we're actually going to pop a leave-in coat conditioning spray before he gets dried, so that'll help rehydrate as well. So this is so important to remove all the rinse off conditioner and not leave it in the coat. It's done its job, so we need to rinse it off. So if you guys are bathing your dogs at home, this shower head is just a normal shower head that we've attached to our bath. So I have one at home that's attached to our laundry sink as well, so I can bath my dogs at home. So it is quite achievable to do this at home on your own dog. So as we rinse our dog, it is super important that we rinse the top of our dog first and then rinse our dog's legs and then their paws last. Because what will happen is, if we rinse our dog's paws 
first and their legs first and we've rinsed all the conditioner out because we don't need any more conditioner, it's done its job. And we've rinsed it all out but we've got a heap of product left in our dog's body and then we begin to rinse. What will actually happen is the conditioner or the shampoo will then go into our dog's legs and our dog's paws and it will sit there and that might be like a bit of residue, a bit of dirt, might be some prickles in there. So it is really super important that we do those feet and legs last. And it might be a reason why your dog is licking their paws or scratching because you haven't rinsed your dog enough. And Dash does get a little bit of allergies, especially this time of year, especially in Australia, because it is really dry and it's hot and there's lots of grass around. Um, that I do have to make sure I rinse him really well because it helps remo remove the pollen in his coat and in his um, that's sitting on his skin. So really super important to rinse those pores last. Okay, so his coat is completely rinsed out, so it has no more product in there. It feels squeaky clean to touch and it looks nice and white, which is great. And the best part is for them is a shake, but it's not good for us. But in fact, it actually removes more water because it's really natural for a dog to shake. So it helps remove the water. But so he has no product left. The coat is really squeaky clean. It doesn't feel slippery. So this is what we want to look for, that it squeaks when we run our hands over it and it's not slippery. So slippery will mean that we haven't rinsed out the conditioner. So if that's the case, rinse again. I normally rinse for a good five minutes and that process, so working from the top and working down our dog's body. Okay, so Dash is completely bathed. He has no more product in him. I'm actually going to dry him, so I'm going to grab his little towel and start to towel dry him. And we are going to head over to our drying area. If you would like to watch the drying video, subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell to get notified. And until next time, happy grooming guys.